Hey everybody, I'm Invisible Katana, and this is my top 10 list for the top 10 things that I believe Splatoon needs to become truly epic. Now, I love the game, I think, like a ton of people do, it's the most recent Nintendo game that's come out that's just been, like, the really big deal. It's had its issues, um, you know, from just ranging from advertising to some of the stuff that's happening now. And so just to kind of get into it, you know, obviously these are the top 10 things I feel going from... 10 to number one being my most wanted thing so of course it's my opinion not yours so i definitely want to know what you guys think um you know your top 10 list or if it's just like a couple of things you can kind of clump stuff together but i started to kind of add things at the last couple of minutes like just before doing this and initially i had like five things and then i added like two more after i got to play the game a little more like i just recently um the Splatfest finish for like the 4th of July stuff. So I learned a couple more things. Like I didn't know about, you know, rerolling attributes and things like that. So I was like, okay, well now that makes me want to add this to the list. So I have a couple of new things on here because it was initially going to be 5, but, you know, I just expanded to 10. But I want to know your top 10 list or top 5 or top whatever. And, you know, what order you guys would uh, rank my list and what, you know, isn't, you know, what's on my list that isn't on yours or, you know, vice versa. So... Definitely put those down in the comment section below. But starting at number 10, I think one thing that we all definitely need, which is important for any game where you play online, is just better matchmaking. Um, definitely starting off, because I was kind of late into it, because I didn't really get to... I don't really have a lot of time to sit down and play the game as often as I'd like to. So when I do is when I get to really rank up and stuff like that. But before that, you know, it's like I'm starting off at like level 7 and stuff, playing Turf War... And I'm going into matches with everyone who's at the max level, which is level 20. So I'm on this team, and it's like I'm the only person on this team who's at like level 7, which means, of course, I have the lowest gear and the lowest weapon, so I have maybe a total of like three or four attributes, and everyone else has like a dozen. So it's like I'm not, you know, it's hard to like really pull your weight as a team member, or even you know, defeat the other team when you're the one at level 7 and obviously everyone else is like, oh, they have four attributes for every single thing. So they're coming in with a dozen attributes and you're coming in with four. So it's something that, I, you know, I think it's just a simple thing that, of course, we need uh, better matchmaking for the game. One thing that definitely stood out, um, and I read this after this Splatfest happened, was that there were so many people that chose, and I guess this was just the fact that it kind of just played out that way, but so many people chose Team Dog that there were actually some people fighting against, you know, people on the same team. So it was like Team Dog versus Team Dog because sometimes it would just play out that way because there were so many people. I, and from what I remember, I think it was like 62% of, you know, the entire selection was actually Team Dog. So that's kind of why that happened, but... You know, just even without that, for as far as leveling goes, we do need better uh, matchmaking for the game. Uh, number nine is something that, you know, obviously they're low on my list, so they're not too important. But I think voice chat would, would be nice for the game. I think everyone kind of wants that. Once again, it's a bit of a staple in general for any game that's going to be online, multi have online multiplayer. And there's a really funny MLG Pro video for Splatoon, and I'll put a link to that in the description below, and I'll probably add annotation too. Um, but it was, it was just a really funny one. Of course, it was, like, all the typical stuff you'd hear, but it, it was a really funny video. But I think voice chat would be pretty cool. I mean, there are mics on the freaking gamepad, so it's not like anyone would need to buy a, a new headset or anything like that. You could just, you know, speak into the thing. That would make, I think that would probably cause a lot of issues because I have no idea how the mics really sound um, when you speak into them on the gamepads. But it would be cool to have it, you know, instead of just up and down for Come On and Booyah. You can talk, you know, talk to your members like, hey, I'm going to do this, or, you know, this area, you know, I'm looking on my gamepad, this area is clear, so I see this person's over there, you know, whoever is near that area, you can do this. And you can cooperate more as a team, which I feel like doesn't really happen except for the very beginning of the matches where it's like, all right, you know, if I have, like, the splat roller, and I'm, you know, have, like, the carbon one, I believe, where you can move really fast people can clearly see, like, all right, he's moving faster, so he can get that area. I'll shoot ahead of him, and, you you know, that's pretty much it. I feel like that's the most teamwork you ever get is the very beginning of the match when it's like, all right, who shoots the farthest? And then you just jump, and then you throw a bomb or something, and then someone jumps past you, and you kind of do, like, a leapfrog um, sort of through the paint. And I feel like after that, it's just mass chaos. So I think voice chat would help out a lot um, as far as teamwork and just it being a staple, you know, of gaming. 
Um, number eight, like, uh, the first couple, honestly, I think pretty much half the list is, like, obvious stuff for multiplayer games. Um, number eight is just being able to back out of the lobby, um, after you've chosen, chosen to continue a game, it's like, oh, well, I have to, you know, and once you end a match, it's just like, either you continue or you don't, and it's like, well, crap, I'd love to be able to, you know, oh, crap, I messed up, or you're doing whatever, if you're recording the game, I'm sure this affects a lot of people, because it happens to me, where if I want to just keep going with the same couple of people I'm playing with and I'm recording, I basically have to play an entire match in between recording because, um, well, if you get a lot of people, you know, you can do that. But if you hit, yeah, that's basically it. There is no, like, you have to play through or basically shut off the entire game to step out. So if you do it by mistake or, you know, whatever, you have to play through that game. And, of course, you're going to you know, want to go through and do it. But... They don't just give you the option, like, you hit yeah, and it's like, well, I want to back out of this, and you just cancel, and someone else can take your place eventually. It's like, you're trapped. You're stuck in there. You either cut off the game, or you randomly lose connection, and that's it. So, being able to back out of the lobby would just be a nice addition to the game. Once again, like I said, staple of um, just playing online, so that would be nice to have in there. Um, number seven, once again, um, being able to equip weapons between matches, or at least switch them. I think we'd all give a nice little sacrifice of 20 to 30 seconds if it allowed us, or even, you know, the 60 second thing. Um, I think for a game like this, because the items are the way they are, and I guess it would change uh, based on your level, because I don't really have too many weapons or even too many um, items myself right now, so it might change a little bit later, but I think we'd all give up 30 to 60 seconds in between matches where it's like, alright, we can just wait everyone can load up and then of course if everyone says they're ready then it'll just start automatically and that's pretty much all you know all there is to it that's how multiplayer games work so being able to switch between matches where you could change up your style or whatever would be a huge benefit that way you wouldn't get you know obviously have to leave out of the entire thing switch weapons and then jump back in and then you're playing with you know a ton of random people where it's like you want to maybe stick with the team even though the team switch back and forth too um which I guess that happens in other multiplayer games too. Like if you have a good team, the next time, even if everyone decides to play again, it'll still just randomly pick, you know, whoever's like, oh, I just went against that person. And like most of the people stayed and then it's like, oh, now we're on the same team. And it's not like the teams are huge. So, you know, it switches everyone up randomly anyway. But um, being able to equip or, you know, change weapons between matches would definitely be nice. And I guess change apparel, too, if that helped. So just being able to switch everything you need to in between. Um, number six for me, I think, is something that would just be a cool addition to the game. It's not really necessary, but I think this would be a better addition, even though I do think the other things are serious staples as far as online multiplayer games. They don't really bother me that much because I'm not too affected by it. But for me, I think for number six i uh, put a co-op campaign i thought that that would be a really cool idea i feel like it was something that it was a really missed opportunity to have you know i don't think four people at one time for the single player because the levels are easy enough when you're just playing by yourself but i think if you could play that at least two players um whether it was online or offline i think would just make you know it would make it really cool and like you don't have to you know stick together the entire time you can just you know mess around and one person is, you know, exploring the level, the other person's actually trying to beat it, you know, one person's trying to find the hidden scrolls or something like that. So you can just play around and help each other out. If one person dies, you know, they respond at the checkpoint and, you know, maybe the other person waits for them or just keeps the level going. But I think that would be really cool. I think it would have been a cool idea to have just a co-op campaign or, you know, the same campaign, but it allows you to at least do two players and, you know, you just go through and maybe one person uses the gamepad just like with um, versus mode, one person uses the gamepad, and another person uses um, the TV, and it's you know that simple. And maybe they'd have a little map thing for whoever's using the gamepad, because then you'd be able to jump to, um, you know, whoever your partner is, just like an online multiplayer. But I think a two-player co-op campaign, or the option to do the campaign in co-op, would be really cool, because there, are, I believe, thirty or forty levels, so there's definitely more than enough content for you to go through even with a second person it would still take you maybe two to three hours i think it's i haven't beaten it yet but every basically little platform takes me about an hour to finish so 
even with another person, that still would be about three or four hours, you know, for the campaign. So I just think that was something that, you know, it really needs to just kind of boost the game up because you can, you know, have a friend play with you or, like I said, if it was online and, um, you know, go in and actually be able to switch weapons too. I don't, um, I haven't played single player since I started playing multiplayer, so I honestly have no idea if you even get to switch weapons yet and take uh, what you bought in single player or bought it from multiplayer into single player. I still don't know that technically because, you know, multiplayer, once you get into it, it's just like, this is way more fun. But, you know, just that option to have two players or have another person with you, whether it's on the couch or online, and you both go through uh, the campaign with each other, I think would just be a really cool experience. Um, number five, uh, going back to the basics of multiplayer, level select, I think... Um, and I guess I could kind of combine these two together. I didn't actually put it there. I just put level select, but level select as well as the option to obviously have all the levels at one time instead of two for regular, two for ranked. Just let us choose what levels we want because obviously it's just like, well, I like this level better than that. I'm better at this level with this weapon and this is the weapon I chose, which of course, if you chose that weapon, you're kind of stuck um, with that until you leave the lobby. So... You know, it's like just letting us choose what levels and the fact that we have so many and that we do get just trapped in two levels for, I believe it's four hours um, for each uh, rotation. The fact that that happens really sucks. It's like you play through the levels and something I really hate is that, you know, even though it's only two levels, at least it could go back and forth every single time. Like I, you know, I'm, obviously you guys experience this too because there are only two levels. But you go through a match, whether it's um, ranked multiplayer or just regular battles, you will go through that and maybe three or four times in a row you will constantly get the same level over and over again. And it's like, there are only two levels. Why can't it just switch back and forth? Like, if there are only two, like it can just go this level and then this level. And that's all it has to do over and over again. And if you jumped into one then maybe you'd catch it on that time or whatever if it's the same couple of people, whatever they played last, then, you know, you'd go to wherever the level they were going to. But I do wish that that was another thing, you know, just kind of all clumped together. Let us just choose the level, then that wouldn't make a difference. You know, that wouldn't be an issue. Like, crap, I'm playing... I can't think of any of the names of the levels, but, like, the skate park level. I'm playing it for the fourth time in a row, and it's like, I just have to... You like you want to stick with it because either you're winning or even if you're losing, you're just enjoying yourself. And you think there are two freaking levels. How is it going to go back? You know, four times in a row, but it keeps happening. So level select would get rid of that. Plus, it would give us the freaking option to just choose all of the levels because there are like eight levels in the game, which you can choose in um, regular multiplayer. For anyone who hasn't played on console with a friend, you can do that in the one-on-one -on -one versus multiplayer on your console itself you choose any level you want um you pick the guns like every after every single round is like both people are there it's just like um a fighting game it's like you see what the other person's about to pick and you just pick whatever weapon you want it tells you your uh sub weapons and all that just like in multiplayer but every single match is like all right here's the guns pick what you want and then here's the level pick what level you want and that's all it has to be in um multiplayer same thing here's your guns here's your level but that's something we don't have so we need it for the game to be better um number four is uh mode select that way you can pick turf war or you can pick tower control which is new and actually that one's pretty fun or you can pick splat zone um i know there's a king of the hill i don't know if that's already out or if that's supposed to be coming out i've only gotten to, i just got to rank battles so i've only gotten to experience splat zones and tower control that was that happened one time and then you know it was like splat zones tower control and then splat zones again so that was pretty much it and i believe it was the same two levels or one of the levels out of the two was exactly the same each time i got splat zones so once again level select but letting us choose the mode would be really cool. That would be amazing for regular battles because all you get is turf war, which I think is just really stupid. I feel like that could change too, but I guess if it did, then it would just be all kind of jumbled up because they'd probably end up screwing up and it's like, oh, splat zone's regular and splat zone's ranked. So just a mode select, whether it's regular battles or ranked battles, we definitely need that as well. Um, number three, uh, something that's really huge is the weapons customization. One of the biggest things that 
bothers me about the game is like, alright, you pick a weapon you really like, and then you get like a crappy sub weapon, or one you're just not used to using. Like, I hate using like the echo locator, I find it completely useless in all honesty. It's like, I don't like using that weapon, um, I don't like using. Uh, the little satellite thing. I know it's useful because you it basically makes a point where you can jump instead of having to jump to your partners. But honestly, it's like I'd rather just you know use this use the actual weapons and choose what I you know what weapons I'm good with and you know sub weapons at least um, what sub weapons I'm good with and what specials I'm good with and that way you can customize your loadout. I guess I shouldn't have put weapon customization, but loadout uh, specifically. And I think it would just be so much better i think it would just be a much better way to have that um laid out where you get to choose here's your main weapon choose your sub weapon and choose your special weapon because everyone plays differently but we can't play as differently as we would want to because we're stuck doing this like if you want to use a certain roller you have to use you know obviously the specific sub weapon specific um special like maybe you want to use the crack on splat roller but you don't really want the crack in special but you just like the you know roller itself or maybe you want the carbon roller which is way faster and you want to combine that with the crack and so when you you know fill it up then you go even further through the map or something like that like it's little things like that that help people you know play the game they really want to play it or the way they re they really want to play it and something else that we just really need um my number two thing uh, something that I kind of recently experienced because of the Splatfest stuff, and that's the attribute customization. Because we get these attributes, um, you start off, you know, when you go to the stores, it's like this is the main attribute. If you like it, uh, well, typically I, I've only bought stuff based on the attributes. I haven't bought anything just because it looks cool. Because I'm trying to win, and you never know what the attributes are going to be. So I always buy like, all right, this attribute I like off the top. So that's pretty much the only that's how I'm buying everything whether I like the way it looks or not although so far fortunately it's all been okay nothing I don't think anything really looks stupid in the game so that's been a bonus but uh, with this Splatfest um, because I was team dog I got some of the super uh, sea snail shells or whatever they're called and so I was able to add slots to one of the items I had and then when I filled it up because two of the items I had which um like they they both had three attributes so it was the main and then they had my two sub attributes two of the items both rolled the exact same attribute twice so i had like my head uh like my hat thing had two of the same attributes and then the pants had two of the same attributes there were different attributes but each rolled a different attribute twice so that really annoyed me i was like that that's freaking stupid it basically like makes it useless even though it obviously they like some of the things stack it was like, I would love to, I'd much rather have different stuff all the way through than have two things. Unless it was damage. Like, if it was damage that came up, I'd be like, that's totally fine. But it was other stuff. So, I added an extra slot to the to the um, headpiece that I had. And then I used another snail to re-roll everything. And you can't do one at a time. You can't re-roll one and choose what you want. It just re-rolls them all randomly. And it's like, this is what you get. So the customization for the attributes would be amazing even if you had to stick with the main attribute i'd be okay with that if we got to at least pick the three sub attributes separately or you know it's like you unlock them and then you just pay to have them re-rolled separately and you get to choose after that like instead of you paying and it re-rolls randomly and it would kind of be a waste of the shell in a sense you just pay a specific amount and then you get to choose the attribute or from the very beginning like i guess that would be a good way to balance it out where well you know screw it just from the beginning once you unlock it you choose what attribute you want instead of it being random and then you have to pay to switch it just from the beginning you took the time in to get those thousand experience points to unlock the sub attribute from there you get to pick what it is and then each subsequent one you get to pick and if you don't like it when you re-roll it then instead of it being re-rolled they probably have to change it actually um you just get to pick whatever attribute you want. I think that you know kind of goes along with the weapons and picking um, main and picking the sub and the special. It's the same thing. We get to play the way we want to instead of oh, it's you know you it's literally a roll of the dice and you just get like I fought someone who had like um, all three of his attributes or at least three out of four attributes were damage and that's totally random 
and it's just like they're just fortunate enough to have had that and it was, I think one of their things was all four of them was strength so it's like all four damage up and it's like if I could choose that's exactly what I'd have for at least one attribute the other two I might pick um, speed like I saw another person that have like four of those stacked on each other throughout the three items and it's like I would love to have that but totally random I can't choose that stuff so you know that's why it's my number two I feel like that's a bit more important than the um weapons because it's like well you pick your main weapon you can at least work with that like if you're good with it typically the main weapon is fairly good and the specials i think tend to be pretty good it's typically just like the sub weapons if i just am not good with them or i just don't like them in general that that's really where that comes from but certain specials i do like more than other specials too and they do work better with other weapons so that's why that was number three but i feel like the attributes no matter the weapon you always have your attributes based on uh, the different clothing and stuff like that. And maybe you'd have to, um, like, yeah, you'd have to pick what attribute you want per each clothing, but, you know, at least you'd be able to choose. So that's my number two. Um, my number one thing that I feel Splatoon needs to become truly epic uh, kind of goes back to the co-op campaign thing, and that's actually just local four or five player co-op um, so that you could play with your friends on the console because I know that you know as fun as this game is it wouldn't be you know it would never be like the new Smash Brothers or anything like that but it's a really great game like obviously with all these issues there I'm sure are way more videos than just mine out there talking about all the issues I know there are it, it's still a game that's really fun to play you know online and then of course you want to share that with people like if people come over it's like we can all play this it could just be four player split screen and then, you know, if a fifth person does play, they would, of course, have the gamepad, and you could split the teams up however you want to, whoever um, was by themselves or whatever, whoever wasn't, you know, controlled by a human, would be bots. And that it would be as simple as that. You pick all the weapons, you pick the levels, you know, you got four people here, and then I'm playing on the gamepad by myself. I have four controlled AI partners. They'd have to work on that, obviously, so the AI isn't crappy for um, whoever ends up alone if, you know, if you end up playing it that way. But I think it would just be a great experience to have, like, just add four-player co-op. Like, that's, I think that was, you know, one of the biggest issues, too, is that there wasn't going to be that from the beginning. And it was like, oh, here's this one-on-one um, -on -one, um, co-op or versus mode, which really sucks. It's not even, like, even one-on-one, -on -one, Turf Wars would be way better than the little stupid balloon stuff. Like, it would be a much weirder experience than playing online, because obviously there's just paint flying all over the paint, all over the place and stuff like that. But it would still be way more fun than, like, oh, well, here are these balloons. Like, they could have added them together, maybe, and it's like, if you shoot the balloons, you get bonus points or something, which add to your special, or some of them have different things. Some add to your special, maybe it refills your tank in one, speed boost, damage boost, random stuff like that. So they could have combined them. But instead, it's just like, shoot the balloons and win all the points. And it's not horrible. I mean, it's at least you get to play with someone, you know, if they want to play with you. You at least have it. But I feel like that would be the number one thing because you may not always be able to go online. Um, even without going online, you could have the online experience. If you played by yourself, then everyone would be bots. It's like a lot of multiplayer games. Um, I, I guess a lot of multiplayer games from the past, really. I feel like most games don't do that at all anymore. But this would be, like, the perfect game to do that. So, you know, it kind of works on two levels, where you get to play with all your friends at home, but if you are just playing by yourself, you can't get online, or you just, you know, want to mess around in the level, or kind of test certain things out and maybe try out the different um, the different modes and stuff like that on your own, you can do that, and you can play with bots and maybe change the AI level, you know, automatically, kind of like Smash Brothers, you get to change it yourself. Um... But I, I feel like that's my number one thing because it has that aspect of, you know, that party element where it's like games like Smash Brothers, uh, for me at least, it's the party game where it's like everyone can play, especially now that it's eight players, which is great. But, you know, that addition is like, it's always that party game where people can come over, people can play it, and then if you had that with Splatoon, it would be great too. It would at least be, you know, five players, some you know, like I said, someone uses a gamepad, and... It would be as simple as that, and I just think that it would be a great, you know, probably my favorite edition because it has the aspect of even if I'm by myself, and I think that's the main reason it's at number one for me, is that, 
you know, even if I was by myself, I could play basically online, you know, if I had some issues. Like I said, it would mostly be an internet connection thing, which I actually have experience with. Um, when I'm at my house, I have to, like, go to my girlfriend's just to play online because the stupid connecting online issues that the Wii U has. So it would work even more for me. It would be better. But just testing out the weapons for the first time because you don't want to lose, you know, lose on your team. You get, you know, less points or, you know, if you're doing rank battle or something, that's not where you want to test out your weapons. And you can just do it and have fun. You might not get any ranking because it's just you playing, you know, by yourself. But it would still be fun. It would still be a bit of a challenge. Because um, a great example of how that could work is some of the single-player levels where they introduce, um, like, the Octolings, and they're just like you. They can make paint and stuff like that. And it is like playing online. They are deadly. They're, like, multiple, uh, multiple enemies coming at you, and you're the only one. So it, it makes it even more challenging. And it can be the exact same sort of experience. And I think it just has... It would add a lot to the game, even though people might not see it that way because, you know, you just play online. But I think it would add a lot to the game um, as far as testing out your weapons, getting better strategies instead of having to go into a match and it's like, I'm testing my strategy against, you know, really strong players who are just destroying me. I can't even test out this weapon and stuff like that. So that's why it's my number one. Um, you know, that's my top ten list. Like I said, I want to know your top ten list, what thing, what you know, five, ten, two, or just one thing you guys think Splatoon needs to become, you know, needs for it to become truly epic, even though it's a great game, with all, you know, with all those issues, we still see them all the time, and um, a funny thing is, like, the Honest trailers, if you guys haven't seen that, that's really funny, and it's, it's just true, it's like, you know, there are all these issues, it's like, but why is this game so fun, it just really is, um, and something random that came to me while I was kind of going through the list is, um, the fact that you can't use the gamepad to play the game fully, like you um, just get the map. Although if you play multiplayer, one person has to use the gamepad. So maybe I, did, I don't know how to switch it, but I feel like there should be an option to switch that if you're playing online. Like maybe you can't use the TV, which I'm sure a lot of people have dealt with at random. You know, There are only a couple of games that do it anyway, like Smash Brothers. You can play straight from the gamepad and look right at it and pretty much do everything. Some stuff you can't do, like putting in names uh, for Miis. Uh, you can't do with the gamepad. Um, but I feel like Splatoon should be able to do that, even if you're playing online, for whatever reason, if you want to or need to, if you can't actually use the TV. Um, something random like that, I wouldn't put on my list. It could be an honorable mention just randomly because it popped in my head. Like, why can't that just switch instead of I'm just looking at the map the whole time? Although no one would switch except for, like I said, if you just for whatever reason can't use the TV, just like, you know, playing by yourself. Um, against bots if you can't get online same sort of thing but random thing that popped into my head while going through the list because of the multiplayer stuff like i have to use the game pad but for whatever reason i can't online but either way thanks for watching i know this is a really long video but i appreciate you guys checking this out like i said i want to know your list um what do you guys think about my list if you rearranged it where would you put things um you know so rearrange my list and add your own list um, any other comments, of course, please put them down in the comment section below, and thanks for watching.